Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I wanted to take and show you guys a little engraving demonstration. So I'm working on a custom hammer for a client of mine and I'm really kind of enjoying experimenting. He gave me some artistic liberty here and so I am going to take and do some little experimenting. So I decided I'd engrave what I like to call this little uh, vine action as what you see up here. I like to call it a creeping ivy which is it's just more or less it's made to look somewhat like a sprout with a little bit of ivy leaves that come out on it and then this gives you uh, the impression of something very uh, natural or so like a vine. So that's one side of the hammer done. Here's the other side of the hammer and we are going to start engraving this. Now before we can engrave this we are going to have to take and scribe some lines. The easiest way that I found that it is to take and scribe a center line is to take and use a pair of calipers and find the center of the piece. Now this piece here I already know about where center is and just use the jaw to take and scribe the line. This really does help out more than you would think when you get to the actual uh, make creation of the vine if you will. And the reason for this being, the reason why you want a center line on the planes that you're doing is because that vine is going to creep to the left and the right of that. Now the next thing I do is I take a carbide scribe like this and I figure out how I'm going to make this vine look. Where it's going to start from, how it's going to scroll and look, and so on. So after I've decided how that's going to get scribed out there, as you can see I'm trying to do this freehand and this is why I call it a creeping ivy. Um, the reason for this being is that it's very natural. It's a natural flowing thing. Uh, you know, you could give yourself reference points and make it all perfectly symmetrical, but it kind of ruins the effect that I'm actually going for here. So, I've got one side drawn, and now what I will actually do is I will start engraving it. That'll be first. So, I'm using a small 8 ounce hammer, or this would be actually considered very large in engraving work, uh, as far as, you know, engraving goes and then I'm using a small little graver. I have videos on how I made this graver. I'll put the links to those in the description down below and I will go ahead and put a card right now if you want to see how those are actually made and then come back to this video. I also have another video on making a small hammer like this, very much like this, and uh, you can watch that as well. Once again, I'll try to put a card and they'll be linked up in the description down below. So now the only thing that's left for us to do is actually engrave this. And I'm going to see if I can get you in just a wee bit closer. There you are. And then we're going to try to take and go ahead and engrave this now. Now, I'm working a little bit offhand for the camera. Ideally, you want to work where the graver is cutting back to yourself, if at all possible. Now, I'm okay with getting kind of awkward just for camera sakes but you'll get a better cut and things if you can see what you're doing. Now, I am fortunate enough that I do not have to use magnification to see this. Uh, don't be hard on yourself if you need to take and use magnification. Um, this can wear on the eyes after a couple hours of doing this if you're getting very elaborate with it. And uh, magnification can certainly help with that. So as you can see, hopefully you're seeing this, we are producing a very nice little clean chip that's rolling out and that's what we're wanting to do. And what I'm doing is I'm actually checking the size of that chip. I'm watching that chip that's being peeled out for its thickness. If the chip is getting thick and then thin and thick and then thin, I'm not keeping even pressure and even depth of cut while I'm cutting. And then that will lead to me having to go back over my work at some point here. So that's what I'm watching predominantly and then trying to take and follow my lines the best I can. 
Again, this is an organic piece. This, this engraving is an organic thing. So it's really not that big of a deal if it, you know, is a little off. If it's something that's going to be asked to follow a pattern or a customer's design exactly, you want, may want to give it a little more thought process uh, as far as keeping everything perfect. But like I said, I'm just engraving um, an organic thing, and so therefore it's not as big of a deal to be perfect. There we go. So now we got our first little engraved line. So now I can, after I get this finished engraved, the main body of this vine, then I'll come in and I'll add the actual little leaf leaflets or laurels, if you will, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, there's no right and wrong answer on that, I don't think. Once again, this is an artistic representation, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but We'll call them the leaves, just for all intents and purposes. They're really just kind of more like a little tiny scroll. Now that I've got this, now I'm going to pick, same thing with the carbide scribe, where these scrolls are going to split off at in their general shape. And I like to come right in the belly, where the belly of that vine is, and I think that looks the most pleasing for a scroll. A scrolled out bit so as long as I do that and when I go to the other side I'll do the same thing so now that'll give us our little creeping ivy so now these these are a little more difficult you have to take and actually you can choose to start in the cut and come around or you can choose to start at the end and those are all just a little bit different there of the way they come out. Just remember how you did one of them so you can do it the same on the other. Uh, reason for that being is when you do the, your cut, when you do your cut and you start cutting in, this will leave a more thick end as where when you cut out of a piece when you come out of the cut it leaves a more of a thin or it like tapers off if you will so depending on what kind of look you're trying to get there uh, is d dictates where which way you go with it here we go so now I got that one little laurel there off to the side again hopefully you guys can see all this I'll move you up in the next clip I'll move you over to the other side and we'll get a little closer so now here, again, I'm going to start at the end and start cutting this right on around. Don't be afraid to have to readjust multiple times. I really need to get myself a graver's vise that would really help with this. But we'll make do for now with what we got. There we go. Voila. There's one side. Okay, let me go ahead and get you moved around here. I'll be back in the next clip, and we'll try to get you a lot closer on this side so you can see, hopefully, a little more detail. Here we are on the other side. Excuse me, I'm talking pretty close to the mic here, so I will try to keep my voice down the best I can there, ladies and gents. But we're going to go ahead and scribe out our next line. Let's see if I can get this drawn just right. And again, you can make adjustments to this as you see fit uh, while you're engraving. So this line is just more or less for reference to make sure you're on track to where you want to be. I'm trying to whisper here. Hopefully you can still hear me. And uh, yeah, so this is just more of a layout line. This isn't the line that you absolutely must follow. 
so just be real clear on that. And just work on your drawing until you get it about right. Until you get it about the way you like it. My hands aren't all that steady. So I have to take and make sure I do it a couple times until I get what I like. Okay. I think I'm okay there. So, again, we're going to start at the end. Okay, we're going to get the engraving. I'm going to switch. Whenever you're engraving, it is important to use the same consistent hammer blows. Okay? You want to use the same consistent hammer blows throughout the entire piece. And you want to hold down thumb pressure, just straight down. You, you don't want to try to push the chisel through the cut. Because if you do, it'll end up skating on you. So you just want to focus on giving it good even thumb pressure. And good even hammer blows. I'm probably so close to this camera right now, you can hear me breathe. And there we have it. So as you can see, once you get a little bit of practice under your belt, the actual engraving does not take that long to do. Of course, I am no master at this by no means. Uh, so, you know, take all my words about this with a grain of salt. Um, heck, for the most part, I'm not sure if I'm even doing this correctly. But, it seems to be cutting out grooves and stuff. And until I can take any sort of class with a master engraver or something like that, and find out that I've done everything wrong for the last year of my life, I'm just going to assume I'm correct. Okay, so there we are. That looks pretty decent to me. Uh, it could be a little better, and I'll probably take time to refine it after this video is over. That way I can really get into it. Okay. So there we go. So now we almost got the other side done. So now we've got to take and once again scribe in what we're doing for the little laurels or the little leaf leaflets or semi scrolls that come out. We got to make sure they're what we're what we're wanting. So you don't have to focus on getting this perfect. They are meant to be a guideline. Kind of give you a rough idea where you want it to be. And for the most part, I aim, I aim for about center of wherever these bubbles, wherever these little divots are, like so, I aim for the center of them. I find that looks the most symmetrical and pleasing to the eye, like so. So again, we're going to start at the end of those divots. And we're going to hopefully work this all the way right back on around.
engraving is pretty challenging enough as it is and then to try to do it and still be able to keep it in shot so you all can see that's another thing entirely So now we'll go ahead and see here. Just like so. Come back around. So that's good to go. Now we'll go to the next one. And like I said, I'll probably clean this graving up a little later on. I can get a little closer to it. I can hold my head and my tongue at the right angle, you know? So go right on around with it. There we go. Okay, so I hope you guys get this. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave it a like. Uh, give, it a, give it one of the big thumbs up for me. Uh, that really does help support the channel and uh, you know let me know what you thought in the comment section down below let me know if there's any sort of topic on this engraving or some type of engraving that you'd like me to cover next and uh, I'll see what I can do so that's it for this video take a moment to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and we will catch you on the next one God bless you